yet faced with so many people trapped in darkness and heavy smoke and more than 80 needing to be sent to hospitals, D.C.'s Homeland Security and Emergency Management Director Chris Geldart says the response was solid. To pull out 200 people, do an event where we go through and do what we call a mass casualty, look at all this, assess all the folks and get 84 people transferred all in the amount of time that they did it, that's a good response. Still, the incident raises serious questions about readiness in cities and towns everywhere for something bigger, especially something aimed at the transportation infrastructure. In 2009, for example, the so-called underwear bomber was trying to blow up a plane over Detroit. Threats to bomb New York subways were discovered that same year, and also in 2006 and 2004. All of which makes even those who feel the system is working ask, what incident may be coming next? What if we have one that's much larger and much more spread across the district? What do you do? Some witnesses said they had the sense that police were not able to coordinate all their radios together with fire and metro workers here. There are also questions about when the power was cut to the tracks and to the train. But here's the thing, Aaron. Even if the investigation finds that all of that was managed as well as it could be, the incident that sparked all of this was actually very small compared to all of those terror threats we just talked about a moment ago. So the question that will be there, even when the investigation is done, is if something that small can cause a problem this big, what might the future hold? Aaron? Pretty scary. Thanks very much, Tom. The next divers down searching the fuselage of Air Asia Flight 8501. They've been down 